Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. I started out YouTube using a decent but tiny sensor Canon camcorder. When I started making videos more frequently, I decided to upgrade. I saved up and I bought this. This is a Sony FDR AX700 camcorder. It has served me well for years. While it has not been my main camera for the last year and a half or so, I still use it regularly because of just how versatile, reliable, and easy to use it is. The vast majority of videos on my channel between early 2018 and early 2020 were recorded with this camera. And to this day, it is still my go-to camera for arc shots and even just random welding shots, shots of amp meters, and stuff like that out in the garage. I still use it a lot. Recently, I started thinking about just how capable and versatile this camera is, and I figured I'd make a little video about it. Granted, this camera won't be for everyone, but for just about everything I do on YouTube, it could get the job done. Still, I'll start with some negatives. First, it's not cheap. This camera is currently $1,900, and despite the fact that I purchased mine nearly four years ago, I actually paid less than that. This is a camera that pretty much never goes on sale, and with the current state of the market, it isn't likely to anytime soon. It's also a bit heavy and bulky. Not too bad considering the functionality, but even some full-frame mirrorless cameras with a smallish lens will be a bit smaller and lighter than this camera. The lens is not interchangeable, so you get what you get. What you get is a maximum aperture of f2.8 that goes to f4.5 at max telephoto. It's an okay lens, but you can't change it down the road if you want something else. This camera can take photos, and the image quality is okay, though it's only a 14 megapixel sensor, but generally if you're looking for a hybrid photo video camera, this isn't your camera. This is a video camera first and foremost. This camera has a one inch class sensor, which can give some background blur and separation, and the image quality is pretty good, but it's not going to match newer, larger sensor cameras in terms of ultimate image quality and noise performance, especially in low light, and it's not gonna give, obviously, the kind of depth of field, or I should say the shallow depth of field that you get from a large aperture lens on a full frame camera. Also, it only records at 8-bit, 420 color, so it's not going to be the best for heavy color grading. So far, it may not sound all that great for almost $2,000, but there is a lot to like here. Since I was just talking about image quality, I'll start there. It's pretty good in most situations. It's not the best in low light, but it does okay with its stacked backside illuminated sensor. Oh, it also has IR night vision, so there's that if you want it. It can record 4K video at 24 or 30 frames per second at up to 100 megabits per second. That's not the highest frame rate or bit rate in the world, but it's good enough for fairly detailed 4K video. The 4K video from this camera won't rival some of the, again, newer, larger sensor mirrorless cameras with their oversampled 4K, but it's pretty good. Plus, the 1080p image quality out of this camera is quite good. For instance, it is much better than the 1080p from a Sony A6400 mirrorless camera, which is line skipped or pixel binned or something along those lines. In fact, I'm sure that the majority of the recording I've done with this AX700 over the years was at 1080p. So if you like to record at 1080 because it's good enough for you and you appreciate the smaller files, you can do so with this camera and get very good quality, detailed 1080. As for the lens, it can't be swapped, but it has a 29 to 348 millimeter equivalent focal length, which is an excellent range that covers most situations. Sure, it would be nice if it was a bit wider at the wide end and a bit faster overall, but it's still a very versatile lens. The minimum focus distance is just four inches, so you get good close-up detail if you need it. Also, since this is the only lens the camera has to deal with, it can have good corrections built in. Things like chromatic aberration, corner darkening, and distortion have never been bad enough to stand out to me at any zoom level. I can only imagine the camera is automatically correcting these things, specifically distortion, because I have never seen that from this camera. It also has excellent optical image stabilization. It's not perfect, but it has a very natural look. As for autofocus, this camera has phase detect autofocus with 273 focus points, 
It has face tracking and object tracking. Probably the best praise I can give about the autofocus is that in the years of using this camera, I never really thought about the autofocus. I never had to think about it. The only time I ever turn autofocus off is when I'm recording an arc shot for a welding video. In that case, I do manually focus, but otherwise I just turn the autofocus on and it does what I need it to do. This camcorder also has built-in ND filters with three different darkening levels. This is awesome on bright days outdoors, but it is also all I use for my welding arc shots. I just manually focus, then I turn the ND filter to max, and I turn the exposure down. I do have a clear filter on the lens to protect it out in the garage, but that's it. I don't use any special filters or record through a helmet or anything like that. I just use this camcorder. Did I mention this camera's versatile? Speaking of versatility, this camera has high frame rate modes with up to 960 frame per second recording. Granted, it is just for short bursts. The 960 frame per second mode in particular can only record for a few seconds at a time. But it can do start or end triggers, and while the resolution is not amazing at 960 frames per second, it is usable and pretty fun to play with. And lower frame rates like 240 have very decent quality. A cheap wireless remote for this camera can allow for some fun shots. And it can also do 1080p at 120 frames per second at 100 megabits per second with sound and autofocus. I've recorded with this AX700 in the sun on hot days and in winter when I had to wade through the snow to set up the tripod. It will happily record until the battery dies or the memory fills up. And even after four years, I still get a good two hours or more out of the original battery. It can also be powered using the included AC adapter. This camcorder has two SD card slots. It can do relay recording so that when one card fills up, it automatically switches to the other card and you can keep going. You can also do simultaneous recording so you have a backup in case of a card failure or if you somehow lose your footage on one of the cards. The built-in microphones are perfectly good for scratch audio and even normal audio in some situations, but it also has a 3.5 millimeter microphone input jack and it has a headphone output jack. And the preamp for the microphone input is pretty good quality, and it is fully adjustable in the camera. It also has Sony's multi-input shoe. So the image quality is pretty good. The lens focal length range is very versatile. It has night vision, ND filters, high frame rate mode. It has Wi-Fi, unlimited recording, good battery life, a good quality audio input, a viewfinder if that's your thing, and more. But there's even still more as to why I love this camera. It is covered with customizable buttons so that you can put all the controls you regularly use right at your fingertips. It has a large, very smooth turning ring on the front with a simple switch that lets you change it between focus and zoom. I typically leave this set as a focus ring for when I'm in manual focus mode, and I use the smoothly variable zoom rocker to control zoom. Speaking of manual focus, there's a button right here to just quickly switch between manual and autofocus. There's also a smaller, very smooth turning knob right here that can be customized to smoothly and finely control different things. There is a full size HDMI output on the back that can provide a clean 4K output. As we already saw, there's a dedicated switch for the ND filters, and there is a dedicated switch for auto and manual modes. And this is one of the things that I really appreciate about this camera. In auto, it behaves just like you would expect, full auto. But in manual, you have complete control over what is auto and what is manual. If you want to control shutter speed and leave everything else auto, you got it. If you want to have shutter speed automatically controlled and manually control everything else yourself, you can do that too. And switching and swapping is super easy. You have dedicated buttons for things like white balance, aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. So if I want to change the ISO, I can just click that button. You can see it highlights it down there. I can just make my adjustment and I'm done. But if I want to put ISO into auto, all I have to do is double click the ISO button and that puts it to auto. If I want to take control back, I just click the button and I can adjust it right from wherever the auto control had it. No problem. And here we have aperture. If I want to set that to auto, I just double click it. Now it's controlling it automatically. Same thing with shutter speed. I can manually adjust that or I can put it back to auto. And all of this stuff can be done 
while recording without going into any menus or anything, and every one of these changes can be made without affecting the rest of the settings. I can put every one of them into manual if I want. Just like that, and that fast. If you do want to dive into the menu, it's actually pretty easy to navigate. This camera doesn't have the complicated menu system from other Sony cameras of the time. In the menu, you have all kinds of options like histograms, zebras, focus peaking, focus zoom, time code options, picture profile options, and more. Plus, there's a dedicated picture profile button as well so that you can easily either switch picture profiles or edit the picture profile you're in. And this camera even has S-Log2 and S-Log3 gamma, as well as multiple HLG modes for HDR recording. Granted, the 8-bit color doesn't respond well to heavy color grading, but you do get good dynamic range and can start from a flat profile for grading, if you're willing to work within the 8-bit limitations. I don't know if I need to go over the entire spec list. I think you get the idea. The point is, this is an amazingly versatile, feature-packed camera with good image quality and excellent usability. I'm not saying there's no other camera that does these things, or maybe some that do some of them better, but this camera just does a whole lot really well, and it is really easy to use. It may not be the best camera ever, or the best camera for everyone, but it is a fantastic all-rounder. If a jack-of-all-trades is what you're looking for, this camera definitely deserves a look. And just a quick note, in case you find the FDR AX100, and think you can save a few hundred bucks for what may seem to be basically the same camera. The AX100 admittedly is similar in a lot of ways, but in my opinion, it isn't nearly the camera the AX700 is. The AX700 has a faster stacked CMOS sensor with phase detect autofocus, among other things. The better sensor and greatly improved autofocus is reason enough for me to say that the AX700 is definitely the camera to get over the AX100. I'm sure the AX100 is an okay camera, but the AX700 has a lot of advantages. So there you have it. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.